Now, I, well, the first thing that uh, I should tell you is that I received a letter a while back that says, could I speak for at least 15 minutes? But I then got a, a letter that said, could I please speak for no more than 10 minutes? And uh, this is obviously because someone heard me before. And uh, I was thinking I'd better get away in case I got one asking me to speak for five. Well, I have a long speech prepared, which I've been working on. So, <laughs> so, so settle down. <laughs> settle down there, particularly at the back. There's still some movement going on. What, what should I, I talk about? Well, of course, what you really want to hear, that's the wrong report. What you really want to hear, <laughs> you really want to hear about that which is, of course, the Retail Distribution Review. And I will very reluctantly say a few words about that. Um, um, but I realize I'm not on a winning streak talking about RDR, so I'll try and get on to something else as quickly as possible, and which will probably be about a third of the way through my introductory remarks. Uh, and then I'll get into the Banking Commission, which I think might interest you um, a bit, on which I normally speak at least for 40 minutes uninterrupted. <laughs> Let, let's see how we do. Uh, on RDR, of course, you've had a very tough time, and many people in this room, some have probably not felt it much at all. But let me just tell you what we actually said on RDR. This is the Treasury Select Committee report I hope I'm not boring you because I gather most of you read this stuff extremely carefully several times over. Um, we said, and this wasn't popular, but I strongly agree with this, trail commission where advice is not offered is very difficult to justify. We concluded the evidence suggests that there will be, as a result of RDR, a loss of market capacity. We are concerned that the loss of advisors, particularly individuals and those in small firms, will disadvantage smaller savers by reducing choice and competition. Personal savings in the UK are unacceptably and unsustainably low. We were concerned about the impact that loss of advisors might have on saving. The FSA seeks to reassure us in its evidence, but we recommend that regular reports on the impact of the RDR on advisor levels and savings through independent financial advice should be compiled by the FSA and its successor, something we intend to hold them to. And let me just carry on reading a little longer. Implementation of the RDR must be to the benefit of consumers. Consumers will not benefit if it results in a reduction in choice and competition through a substantial loss of advisors and firms. We therefore recommend that the FSA defer the introduction of RDR by 12 months, alongside our earlier recommendation to temper the cliff edge nature of the reforms to the required qualifications. Well, as you all know, uh, that report, that part of that report, was ignored by the FSA. And as you all know, we have had a loss of advisors. Providers are leaving the market. Uh, Martin Wheatley said as much when he came to give evidence to us. And the FCA's figures show a marked reduction in the number of advisors. I've got different figures from Lord Devens, but basically it's a, I've got a reduction from 2011 of 40,000 to, ju to July 2013 of 32,000. And I think there is now a risk possibly a considerable risk of consumer detriment as a result. So should the Treasury Committee restart an investigation? Not now. RDR has only been going a, about a year. And as Chris Hannant himself said, your man, it will take at least two years for the full impact of the changes to work through the profession. And in any case, the FCA is embarking on its so-called thematic review on implementation, and I think we need uh, to see that. Now, of course, that's what you've got in front of you now, is a politician telling you what you don't want to hear. Um, but I do want to tell you a bit of good news around for the industry in the Banking Commission's reports. 
and I want to alert you to a number of recommendations we made um, which perhaps have not had the salience they need or deserve. I assume that not all of you have read the almost 1,000 pages uh, of uh, um, work that we produced over the course of the year on the Banking Commission in five reports. By the way, I'd just like to um, alert you to the presence of two other commissioners, my immediate predecessor, John McFall, now Lord McFall, who did a great job on the commission, and Mark Garnier sitting over there uh, also, who did a huge amount of work uh, working with me in tandem, both on the Treasury Select Committee and on the commission. Now, if, if any of you haven't already read the 1,000 pages, do at least make an effort to read, that's the wrong report, do at least make an effort to read this report, which is just our summary of it all in 70 pages uh, for those uh, who are too lazy uh, to, to read the full Monty. Um, let me just remind you of some of those recommendations which I think should benefit your industry. We made clear, and I won't read them out uh, in detail, but I'll summarise them as best I can. We have had far too much box-ticking, mindless data collection uh, and absence of the use of judgment by regulators in demanding information from the regulated community. That really has to end. We have to have more intelligent reporting requirements. We have to see judgment used to identify risk. And we have to make sure that regulators keep a sense of proportion when they're collecting information. Far too much box ticking has gone on with the, with the view to, to regulators minding their backs rather than working out what they're really trying to look for. A second recommendation of ours uh, was that there should be, which has also been missed, is that there should be a cap, that is a freeze in cash terms on the levy. That is that part of the levy that represents it, um, uh, the, pr pr the provision of existing services. We've made new demands of regulators and of course they will need new resources for those. But for the services, for the jobs that they are inheriting, we concluded that they should not be exempt from the general financial stringency that is taking place. That would be good for consumers. I think it will be good for regulators because it will discipline them. And of course, it'll be good for uh, you. Thirdly, we recommended the abolition of the approved persons regime. This was a complex and confused mess, and it was part of that box-ticking exercise to which I referred earlier. Paul Flowers, he passed the APR vetting system, uh, <laughs> but he failed uh, in front of the Treasury Committee within a few minutes. Lord Stevenson was not even reconsidered, not re-examined in the light for fitness and properness, even after the failure of HBOS. There was, I make no statement about what judgment should be passed on Flowers or Stevenson with respect to the APR. We did not do that assessment ourselves. I do think that the regulator should have done a better job at looking at both of them than they clearly did. That, we recommend, should be replaced with a much more clearly thought through framework. Uh, and if you want to uh, go into the detail of that, rather than my explain it in a few sentences, please look at it in the report. Next, we took a look at retrospective action by regulators. Some have argued that there's been quite a bit of this, and there is some evidence of it with respect to PPI, an appalling scandal, but where it's not clear that always the compensation is going to the right places. The Banking Commission argued for the institution of a clear principle uh, which defines mis-selling in a way which greatly reduces the risk of retrospective regulatory action. And I will read you the relevant sentence because this has also been 
missed by many people. If these steps, and you'll have to read what those are, this is paragraph 187, are properly taken, the mere discovery of risk in products cannot be held to constitute mis-selling, where such risks could not reasonably have been identified based on the information available either to the bank or to the regulator at the time that they were sold. That it addresses, in large measure, the concerns that have been expressed over many years about uh, retrospective action on mis-selling. Next, while we have, I, I think we just could travel under the heading consumer education. While we have consumers who don't understand and have the remotest chance of understanding what they're buying, um, we will have enormous scope for mis-selling. The opportunity will be much larger. It's therefore essential that we empower consumers with the basic skills they need. I think once many people are adult, it is too late to institute those skills. That is why what's really needed is basic numeracy and elementary financial literacy taught in schools. Now, we have, as I mentioned before a moment ago with us, Mark Garnier, and I want to pay tribute to the work that Mark has done, not only by working on the Banking Commission and the Treasury Select Committee simultaneously, but also the tremendous service he's done by alerting us all uh, to the importance of financial education, and particularly uh, financial education of the young. Next, competition. Both the Treasury Select Committee and the Banking Commission strongly supported an extension of competition throughout the financial services industry. The regulator, we concluded, the regulators now, need to be drivers of that. It was quite a challenge to get either of them, to persuade either of them, um, to come round to this view. But I'm pleased to say, and cutting a long story short that involved a good deal of toing and froing, one of the three operational objectives of the Financial Conduct Authority is now competition in the new era. And likewise, for those who want a banking license, uh, the PRA, the Prudential Regulation Authority, also has competition as an objective, secondary only, of course, to their task of maintaining financial stability. We need to be clear that while regulation is often improved dramatically by competition and that competition is often the best regulator, it's a paradox that regulators themselves do not by instinct generally want to see more competition, whatever they may say. Regulators want less uncertainty about the regulated community. That can often be achieved with fewer, larger players in the market. And that inevitably means the stifling of innovation. Competition is largely innovation. Price competition is greatly overworked as the main source of it. This is the great insight of Schumpeter and others. It's only with innovation, new entry at the bottom of the market, that we can uh, bring about a really fully competitive market in financial services, or for that matter, almost anything else. I, I think the regulator's spirit is willing at the moment. I'm not sure whether their flesh is a little weak the uh, job of the Treasury Select Committee in Parliament, among others, will now be to hold those regulators to their competition objectives. The getting these recommendations agreed, of course, was a big enough challenge uh, in itself, and getting them onto the uh, statute book where their uh, the statutory support is necessary has also been a challenge. Things haven't been helped by the parliamentary timetable. Uh, but I can bring news from the front, which is that the bill 
as John McFall to my right will confirm, has been intensively debated over the last two days at report stage in the House of Lords. And the government, how should I put it, uh, this is the only phrase I would rather not have reported, uh, is coming quietly on a large number of amendments that we have put down. Um, we, that is, uh, the former banking commissioners in the House of Lords, and I've played, I'm not in the Lords, but obviously I've played a role in helping put together those amendments. And great progress is being made, and I have much greater confidence now uh, that we are going to see implementation of the lion's share of those recommendations than I did only a few days ago. But, of course, what matters most of all is that the regulators now take advantage of the opportunities created by this crisis to make a fresh start, to arrive at the point where they are delivering a much higher quality level of regulation than was the case uh, with the FSA. Lord Deeb and John Gummer was absolutely right when he said we need regulation. Uh, an absence of regulation is not a free market, it's the jungle. Businesses will not locate and thrive in a deregulated market. But nor will they thrive in a market of excessive regulation. We may get down, uh, we may reduce sharply regulatory failure in such a market. We will create stability for the customer, but it will be the stability of the graveyard. That's why Parliament must hold regulators to account to get that balance right. If they get it right, they will set regulation at the level that maximises economic activity legally conducted. It's Parliament's job to balance out, to help balance out those conflicting pressures that there will always be on regulators. But I end with just one thought. It's also up to you, ladies and gentlemen. It's up to you because you've got to tell us what's really going on in this market. I can't tell you how often I have had people come up to me and quietly whisper about shocking behaviour that has taken place, they say, uh, in the regulatory sphere. But I cannot get anyone to go over the parapet to, to put it down in a form that I can use as evidence and present to the committee. And all the commissioners on the Parliamentary uh, Banking Commission had this experience, and many members of the Treasury Select Committee have had it too. Of course we understand why, but find a means. Use a trade association. Look at us here tonight. Find a way of getting that information to us, because that's what our job uh, should and will be all about uh, in the months and years ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, RDR is a huge challenge. The Banking Commission's work, bringing trust back into the financial services is a huge challenge. But we are on the right road to doing that. We do have a series of measures that can help deliver it. Now's the now the job, uh, the task, is to implement it. Thank you very much.